Hello, and welcome to video number one for MDL's Basic Inventor Workshop Series. Uh, today, I'm just going to be, if you, if you look on my screen here, I'm going to be making this lovely part on my screen. Um, it's just going to, we're just going to go over some basic uh, sketching techniques and a few tools, such as the hole tool, making threaded holes, um, as well as fillets, and uh, creating unique shapes in Inventor. So let's dive right into it. So first off from your home screen from your home screen here, we're just gonna go up to new and we're gonna make a standard millimeter part, which is usually what you're probably going to do um in your in your own labs in one CO three. So let's just go ahead and make that standard millimeter part. And we should get a screen something like this. Yours might be a different color than mine. Don't worry, that's just me screwing around with the color scheme. So, um, if I go back to my part over here, we want to be making a shape, sort of, we're going to start with the basic shape, the basic outline of this, which kind of just goes around the circles and these outer lines here. So, Inventor, uh, so actually, right away, we're just going to go up to, um, hopefully you do know that everything in Inventor um, needs to start out as a 2D shape, and then we pull it and distort it to create different 3D features. So when you always when you have the screen, you always want to start with a 2D sketch. So go up to here, click 2D sketch, and then you should get this planes menu here. Um, typically, I like to go on the XY plane, but um, for this, you could also use the XZ plane if you want. Um, right now, I'm just going to start on the XY plane, so you should automatically have a tool selected after you click to start 2D sketch. And when you ever hover over one of these planes, um, they should start to highlight for you. Uh, yours, again, yours might be a different color than mine, don't worry about that. So I'm going to click XY plane. And it should take me to this 2D axis, kind of like in math class when you have the Y and the X axis here. Um, uh, you see, I was I was making this part earlier, so up here I already have the tool selected, but um, yours should say rectangle up here, like that. And uh, if you click the drop down here, and you go down, you see there's a bunch of different shapes you can make. Uh, even polygon, it lets you make uh, octagons, pentagons, hexagons, you know, that sort of deal. Uh, there's also a bunch of different types of slots here. And today we're going to be making a center point slot. So if you go ahead and click center point slot, and um, after you click center point slot, we're just going to hover over the center point of our sketch. We always want to start from the center point, and you can see where it's um, sort of highlighted with a green dot there. We always want to start from the center point of our sketch, because then it um, then our 2D shapes are all constrained to the center. Otherwise, when we make changes to our 2D sketches, they have the potential to fly everywhere and distort um, into shapes that we don't we don't act we don't want at all. Um, so let's just go ahead and click the green dot in the middle. Then you'll see I can just um, and it just turns into a line here. But don't worry about the line. We're just gonna place it somewhere along the x-axis, and then we can just create a, create the slot. Um, you'll see after you after each time you click um, a new shape will sort of pop up and eventually after two clicks you should be uh, you should be at this point. So we have a neat looking slot but it doesn't look anything like my uh, my my part here. So I'm gonna go back to here and so basically we need to change um, the dimensions of this so that it better suits this image, right? So, um, first off the bat, first thing off the bat, the circles are, if you look on my original part here, the circle on the right side is actually a bit bigger than the circle on the left side here. Um, do pay attention to uh, the dimensions I'm about to put on here, um, but first if you actually go up to Dimension Tool, if we click on Dimension Tool, and then we click on one of the circles here, You'll see that it um, uh, a number comes up 2.768. And if we just take that out, um, place it down, you'll see it'll let us edit our dimension here. So it's got like a, some super long arbitrary number in here. I'm going to make it eight millimeters. Go ahead and change that to eight millimeters. Click Enter or click the checkbox, 
and you should see that it becomes much larger on your screen. <laughs> um, but here's the thing, if we try and go, uh, you see how these circles are different shapes? If we try and go to change this now, it, it'll show up as 8, and it, when, when, when I click down and try to change the dimension, it won't let me. So we're gonna, the, that means that both of these circles, uh, there is some constraint that um, Inventor already added when we were making our sketch that says that these um, these circles either have to be the same size or that these lines have to be parallel. So if I just exit out of my dimension tool by clicking escape and I just select my circles here, you'll see that we can actually see that these little symbols here are the constraints that Autodesk Inventor already added. So this right here, if we reference it to this box up here and hover over it, we see that it's a tangent constraint, which just basically means that it's a circle um, that is tangential to a line, or a line that is tangential to a circle at some point. So that's not really um, that's not really referencing uh, that these two circles have to be the same, or that these lines have to be the same. So let's try one of these lines. Aha! So if you see on the lines here, this constraint here, if we reference it up here, it's a parallel constraint. So that it's just saying that these lines have to be parallel. And if you look on my other shape here, these lines aren't parallel, they're sort of angled off from each other because these two circles are different sizes. So, in order to get rid of this um, annoying constraint, we simply uh, have no tool selected up here, don't have any selected. We go down here, we just click the, the symbol for the constraint, and you just hit delete. And now, when we go back to our dimension tool, and try to change our dimension of our circle, it actually lets us. Look at that. So for this circle over here, we're going to change it to 7 millimeters. And bam, it's already starting to look um, a bit similar to my other part. Um, the next thing we're going to do is just change the size. So um, keep, keep on your dimension tool, and we're just going to change the center point distance between these two circles. So I'm going to click, zoom in, and click the center point for that circle. Zoom in on the other side, click that one, make sure they're both selected, and there you go. See, 87 millimeters is a bit long. Um, I'm going to change it to 28. And bam, it is pretty much the exact same, uh, the exact same size as our, as our original part. And if we're not going to finish the sketch yet, uh, I almost accidentally clicked finish sketch. Uh -huh. So. Uh, instead of doing this later, we're actually going to add, you see this little tab up here, this, this tab thing? We're actually going to add that into our sketch right now. Um, it's, there's, a bit, there's a bit of a different technique you have to do for this. So I'm just going to start it off by doing a line. Line like this, line like that, sure looks fine to me. Um, now, we want these lines constrained in a certain way to our probably to our circles as well as our like maybe center point of the part here. Um, right away I want this tab to be a, a 90 degree angle between these two lines. So we're going to go up to our constraint tool up here that I mentioned earlier. And we're actually going to add one of these constraints to the part. Um, the one I want to use here is the perpendicular constraint tool. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to select one of these lines and then I'm going to select the other one and bam it makes them exactly perpendicular which is very handy. I'm just going to exit out of that constraint. Then I'm just going to add some dimensions to this. You'll see when I click the line here, it wants me to <laughs> to add the dimension like this, which is like it's nonsense, right? Like you don't really you don't typically want to dimension something like that. So if you hold right click on your mouse, just hold it, this menu should pop up. And as long as you're still in the dimension you should be able to go down and make it an aligned. So just hover over aligned and release your right click and left click it and now you should be able to have a dimension that looks like this which is very handy when you're um, dimensioning sort of things on an angle. Now we're just going to change this to let's say 7 millimeters and now we have a tab that looks well, looks pretty nice. The only problem is that um, we can move it um, along this line here if we wanted to. And we want it to be concrete, we want it to be stuck in one place. So um, we're going to dimension 
this line to this circle somehow. And here's how we're going to do it. Um, you could, I mean, you could just do like that and, and call it a day, right? Like we can't move it. We can't move it after that, right? Um, but it's uh, we're going to do it a bit different. Um, we're going to go up here to construction line. Now, construction line basically just means you're making lines that won't actually matter um, when you're uh, when you exit out of the 2D sketch and start distorting um, in a 3D view. So, uh, if we go to construction, then we select the line tool. Um, we're going to make a center point line going from this line here down to the top of our part. So if you hover over onto this line, see if there's a green dot here. If there is, that's perfect. Just click it and make it go down like this. doesn't really matter where you put it because we're just going to go back to the perpendicular constraint and apply it. And bam, it should look like that. So after we've applied our perpendicular constraint, I'm going to dimension this line to our center point of our circle. And you should see I should get a dimension like this. So now it's just dimensioning the center of this line to the center of our circle, which is a pretty good uh, reference point. Um, for this, I'm going to make the length 14. And there we go. This is our finished sketch, fini our finished base sketch for our part. So once we have this, I'm going to click Finish Sketch. And bam, it should take you out to like this sort of distorted angle. Um, you can you can rotate this around with the box up on your top right. Um, there's another way you can rotate stuff. If you hold shift and if you're using a mouse and you middle click with your mouse and just drag your mouse around, you can actually um, spin it around like that, which is very handy as well. Um, now we're going to use this 2D shape and turn it into a 3D shape. And typically the the most basic way of doing that and the way we just so want to use in this case would be the extrude tool. Now the extrude tool basically just takes a 2D shape and stretches it into the into a 3D space. So it just adds another axis to our sketch. So if we go to extrude and we select our part, just make sure you select both um, enclosed spaces on your part, it should come out looking like this. Now, <coughs> here's we're going to make a few changes to our to our sketch. Not to our sketch, sorry, to our um, to our our scheme of measuring stuff. So our, our numbering system. So previously we've been using millimeters here, um, but for manufacturing 3D parts, a lot of things come from America, which use inches, which is not very handy to us. But it's something you kind of have to live with. And when you go into upper years, you will in your physics classes and your math classes, you will start using pounds and inches. Uh, periodically. So that's just something you should think about. Um, if you ever want the the conversion between inches and millimeters, 25.4 millimeters is one inch. Um, I'm not sure if that helps you, but that's how we're going to do it. Um, so for manufacturing this part, let's say I want it as one quarter of an inch, so 0 0.25 inches. Why didn't that work? Okay, so sometimes it works if you put um, if you put the the quotes there, but sometimes you have to actually type inch into it. So once we have extruded it out like this, just click OK, and we should have our part looking like this. Now the next thing we want to do is we're actually going to if we if we reference back to our part here, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. So you'll see that we have two holes on either side here. Those are the next features we're going to work on. So, um, in order to make these holes, you can. there's two ways you can do, you, there's two ways you can make holes in Inventor. If you wanted to just make a simple through hole, um, you could use the extrude tool and cut away space from our already created space um, by like sketching a circle and then extruding it away from the part. Or you could use the hole tool, which sounds much simpler, but it's actually more complicated. So um, we're going to use the hole tool. It's not that complicated. Uh, I don't know why I said that. Don't worry. We're going to go up to 2D Sketch. We're going to click on our face there. 
And now we should be able to sketch on, on the top face of this part, on that face, right? You can see where the lines sort of come off of it. So I'm going to go back to front view, and then I'm going to go to point. And I'm just going to make a point somewhere on this on the x-axis, just to make it easier on myself. And then I'm going to constrain that point um, to have a zero distance between the center of our outer circle here and the point, so that it's concentric when we make the hole. Once I've made that point, I'm just going to click Finish Sketch. I'm going to go to Hole. And now it's going to let us make a, make a hole. So I'm just going to pull my hole tool out over here. Um, for this hole, we're, we just want a simple we want a simple hole, right? Because, like, look at this. There's no thread on this. This one is threaded. We'll do that after. But this one is just a simple through hole. So, um, make sure you go. Your hole menu here might look different than mine. Um, but just go to find where it says termination and then select through all. We're also going to make. Uh, we're also going to apply inches to this hole as well. So, I'm going to make it 5 sixteenths of an inch. And this time the quotation marks actually did work, which is nice. Um, now, this is actually all we want for our tool. So once your whole uh, preview starts to, look, starts to look like that, just click OK, and that hole is done. Now we're going to do a hole on the other side. It's pretty much, you started out the exact same way. Go to 2D Sketch, place a point down somewhere on the x-axis, dimension it, Zero, finish sketch, hole tool, it automatically selects it, which is very nice. Now this one, we're actually going to apply a thread to it. Um, so we're going to go up to, make sure you, under hole type, you go to tapped hole. And we're going to select the point, uh, wait, we're actually we're going to go up to change the thread type to ANSI metric M profile. That's just to use the metric profile for your screws um, so we don't have to deal with inches. So we're going to make it size 8, designation M8 by 1.25. Um, let me see what else. Mm. One little thing before we, uh, before we exit out of the sketch, we're just going to make this 22.5 and then we're going to be done. That didn't actually matter, but uh, let's just click OK. Now after after you've clicked OK, you should start to see that there's a bit of a preview for our thread here, which is really nice. Now we're just going to make one more hole. Um, I didn't show you earlier, but on my original part here, you can actually see that there's a hole up here, another threaded hole. It doesn't go down too far, but it, it could be used when we finally assemble this part in a later workshop. So we're going to go back to my part, and we're going to start a new sketch on this face here. So start your 2D sketch, and it should take you right immediately to this face, which is very nice. And then right away, we're actually going to do something called project geometry, which brings out the lines, the sort of outer dimensions of our sketching face, which is very nice as well. I don't, I keep saying that. So let's go up here. We're going to go up to construction line because we're going to, we want to put a, we want a point here. I'll, I'll go back. We want to put a point somewhere in the center of here, right? Now we could just let Inventor do it for us automatically, but it's a bit unreliable. So uh, I'm going to go back up to construction tool. I'm going to make some construction lines that just go through the center of our square. Then, once I've made my construction lines, I'm going to make a point right directly in the middle here. Perfect. Now, when I go to Finish Sketch, I go up to Hole Tool, it should automatically select. Oh my god, look at that travesty. It really wants us to... It wants it because it kept the... Uh, <laughs> it, it, it kept the the features, the, the sizes and everything from our previous hole. It'll do that, Inventor will do that every time usually. So we're just gonna, right away, we're gonna change the size of this hole to make it look less devastating. <laughs> we're gonna go up to ANSI Unified Screw Threads um, as our thread type. Then under Size, scroll up to where it says 0 0.125. A number five screw uh, is what they'll be called when you go to buy them in the store. And the automatic designation for mine is 540 UNC, which is fine. Uh, we're going to keep that. 
under um, thread depth, I think we're I think we want. Let's let's just change thread depth to three here, which which seems a bit pretty nice. Um, we're going to change the termination back to distance, and we're just going to make the distance five. Oops. Make sure the thread changes afterwards too, otherwise the, it will it will have a fail. The thread depth obviously needs to be lower than the actual hole depth. Um, so once you've done that, you can actually click OK, and our final hole is in place. Now we're going to do something uh, something that's actually pretty cool. You can do an inventor. Um, we're actually going to use um, the we're going to use the geometry from the from the overall slot here to create this shape in the middle. So if we go to part, back to my part, I'm going to start a new 2D sketch on this face, and the the tool I used before when I clicked project geometry, we're just going to do that on the entire face. Click it, and you'll see that these lines will highlight. Probably on your screen they'll be yellow, but mine is mine is green just because my background is different. Um, once you've projected geometry, we're going to go up to under under the modify tab. We're going to select offset. Now offset tool will just take the geometry that you've projected, um, and when you click it, you can actually make a make a larger version, make a smaller version on top of it. So we're going to make it a bit smaller, and we're going to make it um, the offset distance from the outer line to the inner line is going to be 3. So we're going to do that with the overall shape, and then we're going to do the same thing with our circles. Now the circles are a bit trickier to get because we want them exactly concentric with our, with our outside circles here. Just click on the inner circle and go around the... go around the go around the outside until you see this little symbol and so that it snaps in place. That little symbol with the arrow, that means it's snapping in place. So I'm going to do that again on the other side. Um, click the inner circle, go to the outside edge, bam, you see how it snap in place. Cool. So now we've got, we've got a bit of a mess of lines here and we're going to clean it up. Basically we just want this inner part this inner shape here. So if we exit out of our offset tool by clicking escape again, we're going to go up to trim and we can actually trim away all all these pesky extra lines here. If you just click and drag around your entire uh, shape, make sure you get these ones too. And we don't actually, if you look on our other part, it won't actually um, look like this, so we're just going to get rid of these lines. It's just going to be a straight line from um, this point to this point. So after we've trimmed away the shit we don't want, we're going to go back up to line, and we're just going to make another line from here to here. The green boxes, the green little dots should should guide you. And once you've got this nice little shape in here, we're just going to finish sketch. And, and once you've got it, you should see that it's on that face. Click Extrude. And you'll see that it wants to extrude material out. This is what I was mentioning before when we say we can use extrude to actually cut material away from the original from the original part. So if I go up to cut under here, and it'll actually cut away material from the inside. But we don't actually want it to cut that much, so I'm just going to make it some um, I'm gonna make it one eighth of an inch. So that's point one two five inches. There we go. Now we can start just finishing off this part. Um, you'll see that it looks it looks it looks pretty much like our original part here, but there's a bit of a difference because this one just looks fancy. That's because we've applied I've well I've applied a uh, bunch of fillets and chamfers to this to make it look nice. So I'm just gonna do that with our other part. One more thing, so to finish off this part, we're just going to do, going to go up to the fillet tool here. And because of this, uh, this inner shape, we've used inches for it so far, we're just going to keep using inches for it. I know, it's a bit brutal. So we're going to go up to make it 1 16th inches. And in this menu here, just change your radius to that under the fillet tool. And just start selecting the edges on your sh on that you want to fill it away. So 
you can actually just select a bunch of them at once and they'll start looking a bit like an art piece because <laughs> it actually does create edge lines for the fillets as well and once you've selected all the eight inner edges just click apply and it should look pretty nice I cancel out of this fillet tool. We actually want a few other fillets just on the top here. Now, tip you see this sharp edge up here? That's typically not something we want in a good design, especially if you were on a co op, um, because this is ultimately going to be used by customers, and this sharp edge will cut you, especially if it is made out of metal or some sort of uh, sharp plastic. So, I'll go up to fillet. Uh, I'm going to change these fillets. I'm going to make them, let's say, a uh, quarter eight inches. I'm just going to do it to these inner edges here just to smooth them off and make this a bit more of a, a, a gradual increase. And I'm going to click Add because I don't want to exit out of this fillet tool. Uh, if I want it to be lazy, I'm going to go up here and just make this one millimeter. See, now we've, we've evened off that, uh, we've rounded off that sharp edge on top. And once we've done that, just click Apply, Cancel, and there you go. It's starting to look almost exactly how we want it. Now there's just one more thing uh, we want to to ease down. Uh, there's these edges are also looking, even though they're circular, they're a bit sharp to the touch, um, as well as these ones up here. Uh, and this time, just to change it up, we're going to use the chamfer instead of fillet. Now chamfer is basically just a straight fillet. Instead of rounding it down, it just kind of chops off the corner. So if we go up to chamfer. Let's change the distance to 0 0.5 millimeters. And then if we just click this edge, we click this edge. Um, I don't think we, I don't think there's any other edges we need to fill it down. Uh, no, no, that looks good. Just hit apply after you click those two edges, and there we go. Our part is complete. Uh,